Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial on RPG Maker MZ. In this episode, we're going to be covering switches and variables. So switches and variables are pretty much the things that drive your game to move forward, right? Um, and I'm going to explain that to you. So let's go ahead and look at switches first. So switches are pretty much either on or off. So something will either happen if the switch is on or off. So for example, we have this event here and all it's doing is it's a regular switch and all it does is it turns on the game, the, um, the switch called game start, right? So before we continue, let's go ahead and look at the anatomy of setting up an actual switch, right? So in order to do anything with switches, you have to go into your event commands, go to control switches, right? This is a pretty straightforward interface. Um, you either pick if you want to control a single switch or multiple switches, right? And you could either turn it on or off. So pretty much that's what we have here. We have, ooh, and also the last thing is, and also keep in mind that these switches, all these names you pick yourself. So it depends on what you need it for. Like for example, if this switch was to activate a lever, you would name it lever switch or something like that, right? These are the switches I'm using for my game. I'm not gonna rename them, but just know that when the switch game start turns on, this event page would then become active because one of its condition, conditions is the switch game start. So when I act, interact with this event, it's gonna move me to the second page, right? And then I will also turn it off from the second page, as you can see, which will bring me back to the first page, right? So let's go ahead and try that out and see how that look, what that looks like exactly. So if I activate this switch, as you can see, the event pages are flipping on and off, right? As you can see, the lever is being animated. So this is the first event page when the switch is on, and this is the second event page when the switch is off, right? So that's what's happening. So what you could also do is you could have a treasure chest somewhere else in the world, right? So let's just go ahead and make a quick event creation, give myself a sword, right? And then in this chest, you can make the, you can make the condition a switch. I mean the same condition as the switch that you're turning on right so when you go back into the game when you activate this switch it will also activate the chest right so switches are pretty straightforward now variables on the other hand are a little bit different right they can still work the same way as switches but think about variables as a container of values right so what I mean by that is let's go ahead and take a look at the same scenario that we just did with this, right? And let's actually copy this event page. Make a variable spawn limit is one, right? I mean, this is just for later. Let's keep that over here. So this is the same example here, right? These two things are pretty much identical, right? So if I go ahead and test the game, right? The switch is still flipping. So the switch is still flipping back and forth. So pretty much they're working the same exact way, right? So, and here let's go ahead and go through how variables are set up. So in order to get to control your variables, you have to open up your event command and on the game progression, you see control variables, right? From here, you get to pick again, whether if you want to control a single variable or multiple variables at the same time. From there, you pick what you want to happen to that variable, right? So let me just go ahead and give you a brief rundown, right? So all the variables are initiated as zero. So they all start off as zero. So by me saying, pick this first variable, which is called random, right? And then add one to it. What that does is it takes the, um, the previous value, which is zero, and then it just adds one to it. I could subtract the one from that previous value, which is zero, and then it becomes negative one. Or I can multiply one, then it becomes zero, or divide, which I don't think you could do that, and a whole bunch of these other stuff, right? So all this does is just operate on the previous value, right? And then the upper end is what you want to do, what that value will be that you're um, actually adding or subtracting or setting that variable to, right? So you can make it a constant. So for example, you could add a constant of one to it. You could set it to 99. So no matter what the previous value is, it would then be set to 99. You could set it to another variable that you have stored somewhere else. You could set it to a random variable, I mean, um, a random um, value between zero or whatever numbers you put in between here, right? So you could have it be that random value, 
You could also have it hold some information of your game data, like your map ID, so all these maps ID, so when you're in the game, when you call this, whatever map the character is currently on, this will store that map ID for you to do some other stuff with later, right? You have a whole bunch of other um, options, like for example, item ID, you could count how many of that item that the player has, and it's all the same for items within the armor. You could check the actors level and all that other stuff and store it in a variable to use for conditions like for example you can make it so that in order for a character to start a quest they have to be a certain level and the way for you to check that level is by setting that variable to that level and then checking if that level is at the appropriate level right so and then of course you could do your scripts which are custom stuff um we'll get into in the more advanced variables and variables and switches tutorials later right so pretty much how we get this variable to act as let's switch is all we're doing is when you activate this ver um, event all it's doing is adding a one to that variable right and then this just checks if the variable is if the variable's value is greater than or equals to one, and if it is, this will, of course, shift into the, will activate, right? So now let's go ahead and show you how else, and again, like I said, variables keep track of values, right? So let's say, for example, you want this chest to only appear when you when you activate all these three switches. You could definitely do this with a switch, but it's more it's easier to do with variables, right? Because all you have to do is in all these event pages, make it increase the variable that you want to keep track of by one, right? And then so let me just show you what this is doing. All these events are identical. So the first event page is blank, so it's always showing up. When you activate it, it's gonna turn this um, variable spawn limit and it's gonna increase it to one. It's gonna turn on the self switch, which is just gonna um, activate the second event page, right? Um, and then when you activate all three of them, this chest has um, the variable as its condition to only show up when you have, when spawn limit is greater than or equals to three. So if we test this out, right? So we have this one, and as you can see, this is the okay i also forgot to explain this so as you can see we have game start here and then we also have another event page condition right so this chest will show up whether if game start is on or if spawn limit is at least one right so pretty much we have it working the same way being activated with this switch here so let's go back and continue and then once we hit the third one the chest will then appear right so like i said switches and variables are the things that make your game progress and the things that you use to keep track of stuff right like your player levels just some random values that you want to keep track of like if you use it to keep track of like if you're doing a mini game like you know values for your mini games and stuff like that but yeah this is it for the tutorial we're gonna I'm gonna dive in deeper into variables and switches and the more advanced stuff you can do with them. Mainly the more advanced stuff you could do with variables and that's stuff using the game data and also using the script commands. But yeah, thank you guys again for tuning in. I'm gonna try to make more tutorials for you guys. Uh, but yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell notification icon, all that good stuff guys. I have more awesome videos coming up. Let me just make sure I didn't forget anything. Last thing we're gonna talk about, and then we're we're pretty much done. So switches and self switches. So now that you know how switches work, self switches work the same way, right? But the only difference between a self switch and a regular switch is a regular switch is global, right? So that means this event and this event will see the same game start switch, right? Unless you have a plugin that lets you make all your global variable, I mean switches and variables into self switches, but let's talk about that later. Right now, all your switches are global. So this game start, every single event sees the game start switch, right? But if you want something that's more localized, so the individual events that other events will see or share, you use your self switches, which is this. Unfortunately, you only get four options, self switch A and all the way to D. That's why people make plugins to allow you to use your regular global switches and turn them into self switches to make it more user, not user friendly, but more utility based.
but anyways so slot switches work the same way as events so as you can see you could check your switch here the same way you could check your cell switch you check which one you want to be on and the cell switch is controlled the same way it switches so you pick which cell switch you want to be turned on or off and you turn it on and off and then depending on the value your conditions will be met and that's pretty much it for cell switches thank you guys you guys are awesome i appreciate you guys peace